get real. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page? I wrote up notes about it because I'm honestly about to start stripping. Count one, two, three. And don't you stop the music getting to it. Won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it. You can do it. Won't you dance with me? Move your Hey y'all, what is up? It is Marissa Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Some of you may know me as my drifting desk where I help you conquer college and that's kind of what we're gonna do today. Basically this video is very impromptu, kind of a story time, but also very informational because of some things that you may not know, if, even if you're already in college, but definitely going into college because I know as an incoming freshman, I knew none of this. So I'm about to share my wealth of knowledge through my crappy experiences with you today so that I guess hopefully you can conquer college better than I did. I don't know. We're just gonna get on with it. Before we dive into the video, I do have a couple of announcements. One being that I am changing up my posting days. If you're new to my channel, I always post three days a week, typically on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, but that's kind of weird to me. I don't know why I started doing that and why those days are significant, they're not. So to make things a little more easy and just normal, <laughs> I guess, we're switching it up to Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays now, so y'all can expect, you know, informational videos or chit chat videos like this one on Mondays and Wednesdays, and typically Fridays are my vlog days, and so y'all will get to see and hang out with me vlog style. I usually make videos about hauls, DIYs, how-tos, vlogs obviously, or college videos like this one. So if that sounds fun to you, consider subscribing down below and come and hang out with us three times a week. Also, I'm gonna have a poll up above because I'm kind of curious. I'm also trying to switch up my posting times. I usually post around 9 a.m., but I'm also trying to try it out for like 6 p.m. I don't know, if you guys have a preference, let me know up above if you like morning times or evening times. I just wanna do what works best for y'all so that y'all can watch my content. Second announcement and last announcement, I promise we're gonna get into the video quickly here is that I'm gonna be posting a, another Q&A about college this time we're doing a Q&A about sorority life so if you are thinking about rushing or thinking about going through recruitment leave me questions down below that you have about sorority life I will gladly answer them here in a couple weeks in another Q&A video that is it I promise that's all I'm gonna talk that's all my announcements we can dive on into the video now I am just gonna warn you that this video is kind of venti ranty and full of a lot of emotion okay I'm very upset about this topic as you could probably tell from the title and so I might get a little sassy I might get a little upset here and there but it's still trying to be a little informational for y'all and another thing that I did want to mention just so if some of y'all are watching and you're like where are you getting this information from I'm gonna link the website down below it is basically the federal student aid government site okay this is where I learned all of my stuff and where I'm keeping my receipts and all that good stuff I'll try to link individual pages too because the site can be kind of confusing if y'all are just curious about some things I'll post them down below in the description box but that is definitely where I'm getting all my site it is from the federal government because the federal government is the one who does the FAFSA. What is the FAFSA you ask? Perfect segue into this first portion of this video which is going to be mainly definitions. I want to make sure that y'all know what I'm talking about before I start talking about it so I'm going to hit some key things that I'm going to keep saying throughout this video and tell you what they are that way you're not confused when I just start spitting them out. So let's start with FAFSA. FAFSA stands for, I'm just I'm just pulling it up just so you know I'm, I'm serious about this. So studentaid.ed.gov says that the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. FAFSA. Which I'm pretty sure it's always pronounced like FAF. FAFSA, FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A, FAFSA, but I always say FAFSA. I feel like the F-A-S-F-A always sounds better. So please ignore me when I'm saying FAFSA. I understand that it is FAFSA, but that doesn't roll off the tongue as easily as FAFSA. So besides the point. That's what FAFSA is. I also, in case you're curious, I'm very serious about this video. I wrote up notes about it and everything. So we have receipts, we have things that I'm gonna touch on today and it's about to get real. A couple other definitions that I wanna run through. COA, COA stands for cost of attendance. What that means is basically that how much does it cost to attend your college or university, period. The COA is determined by your specific school. So the government really has nothing to do with that. The government doesn't know how much it costs to go to your school. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of different schools you could be going to. So your school is the one who determines that COA number. EFC. EFC stands for Expected Family Contribution. Now this EFC, that number is made by the government. They do that through the information that you provide on the FAFSA. So when you fill out the FAFSA, you give all of your information, your tax information, your parents information, their tax information, and the government comes up with an EFC, an Expected Family Contribution. What does that mean? Glad you asked. That means basically in a nutshell, again kind of angry while I say this though I know that it's not 
not like 100% this, but it basically means how much your family should be contributing to your college career. And you are included in that EFC. That can range anywhere from literally $0 to like 6 million, I'm sure. I don't know how big these people have EFCs, but it can range tremendously. Now, need. Need obviously is like, oh, I need this versus I want this, whatever, cool, you know what need means. But need in the federal student aid kind of terms is basically put into like a formula, which is your COA, cost of attendance, minus your EFC, expected family contribution, equals your need. Easy math here, just because I can't do mental math. $10,000 to attend school. Your EFC is $5,000, which means once your parents and you pay for $5,000, what's left? Another $5,000. So you need another $5,000. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page? So that's your need. Long story short, they do this every year. You fill out the FAFSA every year for school and they recalculate all of these things and award you every year. So Marissa, like, why are you making this video? Like, why, why does it matter? I wanna, I wanna know the dirt. I wanna know what's going on. Great question. The next portion of this video that I wanna talk about is just basically why I'm mad. Reason number one, like literally the biggest reason why I'm upset about this topic today is because I had no idea about this topic until literally a month ago. And just, I guess I didn't even give you background on me. I'm I'm a fifth year senior, okay? I'm a super senior, taking my victory lap of college. So to think that I don't know any of this stuff until my fifth year, I'm just kind of upset. And I don't know who was supposed to tell me, if the government was supposed to tell me, if my school was supposed to tell me, maybe they did and it was in one of those really long things that you know you don't read the terms and agreements of your iPhone every time you reset it. Maybe I was told, but honestly I wasn't. If I wasn't actually told and explained this information to, I just, I don't count it, okay? So whatever I signed as an incoming freshman, that don't count. I'm just, I just wanna throw that out there. And I'll, we'll get to how it's affecting me later. I'll explain all of that in a little bit. I just, I just wanna explain more about, you know, like the FAFSA. So now we're, we're referencing my little list here. I just have some like bullet points of some other things that like make me mad and what I'm kind of upset about. This is when all of our acronyms are coming into play. So remember, remember those definitions that I gave you earlier when this is gonna come in handy right now. Basically your EFC, your expected family contribution, like. I said is expected of your family to contribute. So what happens if you don't have a good relationship with your family? What happens if your parents don't pay for your school? What happens if they make a buttload of money? They don't give it to you. What happens if they can give you some money but not to that amount of that EFC that's really high? Like what are you supposed to do? Where is, where's that money coming from? And I just want to know why the government thinks that my family is, is supposed to pay all of this. You know, I have friends whose EFCs are like 50,000 and 60,000 and some EFCs that are even higher. And they're like, what? Like how are, my parents do not have 50 grand chilling in the bank to give to me to go to school. Like yes, they help and yes, they contribute, but I don't know where they're coming up with these numbers from. Again, I don't understand algor algorithms or math that they're doing to do all of this. That's the government's issue. But all I'm trying to say is I don't get any of that money, but that also affects how much aid I'm getting from my school. Is that number? So dependent on if my university is gonna give me grants or scholarships or whatever, whatever's going on, other loans, I don't know, is dependent on the EFC. And so if it's a really high EFC, I don't, I don't get anything. And it doesn't matter if I'm actually physically being given that money. It's just the government expects that amount of money. So now my university doesn't give me anything. Do you, do you see where I'm coming from here? I'm trying to explain this in like the easiest way possible, but it's so hard. Cause again, I still don't even understand what's going on, but I'm just kind of upset. And I know a lot of people are, once you've been in school for a little bit and you actually start learning what these things are, you'll, you'll start to get it. Let's step away from EFC. Now let's get into, I guess, the juicy details T part here as to why I'm specifically upset and kind of what's going on with me and my financial aid. So typically, I, I mean, from the website at least that I got, the most common thing to be awarded from the government are loans. And that would be like subsidized loans versus unsubsidized loans. Each of those loans have annual limits, which means there's a cap that you can get for the year if you are even able to get up to that cap, but you definitely couldn't get more than that. I guess a slight disclaimer, I'm of course not gonna be sharing any of my personal information with y'all or my specific financial aid stuff with you, none of your business. But I do just wanna tell you that basically, remember how when we were talking about those annual limits for the loans that the FAFSA can provide you? There's also a thing called an aggregate limit. This is kind of what sparked me to do my research on this federal financial aid website, is that when my school came out with my award summary this year and told me everything that I was being awarded for school, whether that's from the FAFSA or from the school in general, I looked at it and I was just kind of, I was shocked because it wasn't what I was expecting and it's not what I normally get. So I did stop by my school's financial aid office and ask them some questions. So I I'm, I'm, would definitely recommend if you guys have any questions, definitely stop by. Because again, I don't work for the government. I don't know how this stuff works. I'm just venting to y'all. I stopped by them to ask what's going on and they said that I had hit my aggregate limit for my loans. So I wouldn't be able to receive any more. So upon further research on the federal student aid website is that an aggregate limit is basically like your total limit of loans that you can receive. So those annual loans are like per year is the max that you 
can get. But then if you like add up all of those max per year, there's like a max max that you can totally get. And I hit that max max. I didn't know that there was such thing as one, the annual limits period. I just kind of thought that that's what I was being awarded. And then I didn't know about an aggregate limit of like a max max that I could totally take out. And so basically, long story short, the aggregate limit is like four years worth of school. So like since I took out all of my annual limits every year throughout my first four years, now I get basically nothing in my financial aid because I've used it all in my past four years because I'm going into my fifth year now. Had I known about any of this, I don't know if I would be going a fifth year because if I'm not receiving my financial aid that I'm usually getting to help me pay for school, I honestly don't know how I'm going to pay for school. <laughs> like why? I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to put this into words other than the fact that like I didn't know about annual limits or aggregate limits or anything regarding the FAFSA and now I'm going into my fifth year getting slammed in the face with like basically saying that well we have we're, your, your funds are exhausted here's your cost of attendance which is you know thousands and thousands of dollars which now you're solely responsible for because you've hit an aggregate limit and the federal government isn't helping you anymore I don't know I don't know how I'm coming across but I don't want it to be like the government needs to pay for my school the government should be paying for everybody's school like no I don't think that like again I'm not telling you my personal information but the government really wasn't helping me out that much it did help a lot but typically I would pay for the rest myself by working a crap ton of jobs to pay for it and that was even just to get by like that was scraping and now if I'm not getting the aid that means I have to work a crap ton more jobs or a crap ton of more hours to not only hit what I was normally hitting which was already killing me but to do it even more and so like that's just that's just something that kind of hit me in the face and that I really wasn't expecting and I wasn't ready to hear or to deal with and it's been about like a month maybe a month and a half since I've gotten this news and I'm still like lost because I'm gonna be real with y'all I don't really know how I'm gonna pay for school this year I've already decided to go a fifth year I have to go a fifth year I can't graduate yet but I don't know how I'm gonna pay for it because I've hit an aggregate limit that I didn't know existed when I spoke to my academic advisor about staying a fifth year I wish she would have been able to tell me this or even just say yeah why don't you visit the financial aid office to see how that may affect your financial aid I just, I'm not saying that she needs to know all this information but like I don't know just be just knowing about this stuff I guess would have made it easier maybe so I could have planned better to stay a fifth year or I just wouldn't have stayed a fifth year period so it's kind of unfortunate kind of irritating and and now basically I'm up to having to take out private loans which is like going through my bank which is gonna be like interest rates up the butt and I, that's just another thing to add to my credit because I, this is very adulty of me but if you guys were to run like a credit report or like look at your credit you can see like how many things are like out in your name in terms of like loans or things affecting your credit and right now I have two which is just my like federal loans and my credit card and so then that would add a third thing to my credit which I don't know how much it would affect it maybe it won't I don't know again I'm not a government person but I would assume that it's gonna affect my credit and so like I'm hesitant to take out personal loans because that's another thing to go to my credit to affect my credit but like how else am I gonna pay for school because I'm honestly about to start stripping and like literally it just all makes sense as to like why people do that <laughs> like I'm not I'm not even joking y'all like I just <sighs> I don't know. So I guess now you can see why I'm a little upset with the government, why I'm a little upset with the FAFSA, and why I'm just upset. I don't know. I don't even know what to say, but I just I just needed to get that off my chest because obviously my whole channel is about conquering college, and I've had this since my freshman year, and I've been so close with my subscribers, and I love each and every one of you. You guys know my life so personally in and out, and like I love to share things with y'all, and you guys knew when I decided to stay a fifth year. I just, I don't know. I just like to keep you guys in the loop and to hopefully help you guys. So that you don't make the same mistakes I do like that's the whole point of me doing this I'm hoping it was helpful or I'm hoping it gave you something I don't know I don't really know we're like in this video because it's kind of a downer very different from my normal channel I'm usually like Woo, like mm, like really really excited and happy all the time but like not that I'm not happy I'm just stressed okay I'm stressed so yeah We'll just leave it there. Thank you for letting me vent to you. <laughs> Don't forget that I will be posting a sorority Q&A here soon. So again, if you have any questions about Greek life or sorority life, let me know down below. I've been requested to do like a how I pay for college period kind of video. So if you guys want that, like, like this video, let me know and I can do more like financial kind of stuff or like adulting part of college. I usually show, you know, like the happy fun side of college, but this is the real life side of college. So if you guys want more of that, let me know. But thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye. Sunset high and a buddy's low Blood rush in the hazel glow